Hello my little cell mateys, welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the index and the match function, combine them together to create a magical lookup formula. Not only is this formula powerful and flexible, it basically means you can do away with VLOOKUP for good. Because if you've been using VLOOKUP for a while, then you'll know that there are many limitations to it. And all of those issues are cast aside when we progress on to using index and match to perform our lookups. So we're going to take a look at a couple of basic examples. I'm going to throw in some data validation and some named ranges as a little bonus. So if this sounds like something that you're going to be interested in, then please keep watching. So first things first, I'm going to have to put on my glasses for this one because um, I've run out of contact lenses. Hopefully the ring light reflecting in them isn't going to be too distracting for you. So let's take a look at our first example. Now, if you take a look at this worksheet, I have some basic data on here. It's not a huge data set. It's fairly small. And this might be something like some HR information. So we have the employee ID in column A. We then have the employee name their job title, department, manager, and their salary. And what I'm aiming to do here with a lookup is I want to be able to type in or select from a drop-down list the employee ID number, and I want Excel to return to me the name, the job title, and the salary. Sounds straightforward enough. Now I could do this using a VLOOKUP, but we're gonna use index and match. Now you'll often hear index and match used together in the same sentence. They are a very popular combination of functions, but they are individual functions in their own right. If you jump up to the formulas tab and go to the lookup and reference group, this is where you'll find them. We have index in there and then we have match. So let's first start out by taking a look at these functions individually, because that's going to help illustrate to you why they're so powerful when used together. So let's click in cell J7. I'm going to type in equals and let's look at index first of all. Now index has two different ways of constructing this formula. And I would say that 90% of the time you're going to use the first one. So let's stick with that. Now the first argument there is the array. Now, the way that I like to remember this is the array is the range of cells that contains your answer. So what am I looking for here? I'm looking for the name. So my array is going to be where that answer is going to be found, which is this name range, comma. The next argument is row number. So I need to tell Excel the row number of the value I want to return. So maybe I want to return the name Mike Young. The row number for Mike Young is going to be three. And remember, when we're talking about row number in this context, we mean the row number of the range that we've selected. So this is the third entry down in my range as opposed to the third row of the spreadsheet. Now you'll also see that there is an optional third argument here of column num. I'm not gonna go into that at the moment. Let's just stick to row number close off our bracket, hit enter, and we get the result of Mike Young returned. Now that is all well and good. And because our data set is very small, it's very easy for me to just count down to find that row number. But imagine if you have a spreadsheet that contains hundreds or even thousands of rows of data. Are you really gonna to want to be sitting there counting down until you find your entry? No, you're not. So we want to find a way of working more efficiently by automating the finding of this row number. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what the match function does. Now, before we do match, I'm actually going to type an employee ID in here. So let's just take this first one. I'm just gonna copy and paste that in here for this example. So let's see what match does. The first argument for match is going to be the lookup value. So I could say to match, look up this employee ID in J5, look it up in this array and do an exact match. I want Excel to exactly match that employee number in the lookup array. So I've got a zero on the end there. Let's close the bracket down, hit enter. It gives us a result of one. So it's telling me that this employee is in the first row. So essentially what we've done there is we've automated the finding of the row number. 
So now that we have that, we can basically combine index and match together to perform a really powerful and flexible lookup. Now, before we do this, I'm going to make my life a little bit easier by adding the employee IDs into a data validation dropdown list, simply so I don't have to keep typing them in every single time. And I use data validation dropdown lists all the time. I think they're so helpful. If you've never created one before, you'll find the option on the data tab in the data tools group. Click the drop down data validation. We want to create a list and the source for our list is going to be these employee IDs. Click on OK. I now have my little drop down arrow and it's very easy for me to select whichever employee I'm interested in. So now let's go in and pull through the name of this employee. So we're going to type in equals index, open our bracket. Remember the array is the range that contains your answer. So I'm looking for the name. So this is going to be my array, comma. We then need the row number. Remember that match formula automates the finding of that row number. So we're gonna go straight into match. Our lookup value is going to be whatever we have in J5, comma. Where are we gonna look up that employee ID? In the employee ID range, and we're doing an exact match. I want it to exactly match that number in the table. Let's close off our match formula. Let's close off our index formula, hit enter, and we get our result. Let's check to make sure this works. If I select a different employee, it updates. So this is a very nice dynamic way of working. Let's do it one more time so we can practice. Equals index, open bracket. This time we're looking for the job title. So our array is where we're going to find our answer, which is going to be in the job title range. We want to automate the finding of the row number by using match. Our lookup value is going to be what we have in J5. We want to look up the employee ID number in the employee ID range. And we want to do an exact match. Close off our match, close off our index, hit enter, and we can now see that Stephen Martinez is a HR manager. Let's check to make sure that's working. Let's choose something else. There we go. Now I could make this even easier on myself. In the two examples I've shown you, each time I've been going in and I've been selecting the different ranges to include in my formula. And that's absolutely fine. You can carry on doing that. And with a small data set, it's not too much of a hassle. But again, if you have a very large data set, sometimes it's a bit easier and more efficient to use named ranges in your formula instead. And if you're not sure what a named range is, basically you can select any range of cells and give it a meaningful name so that it's easy to identify. A formula that contains named ranges is a lot easier to understand than one that just has cell references. So let's name all of these ranges. So I want to name this range just here, employee ID, this range called name, this range job title, so on and so forth. So a quick way of doing this is you can select the ranges that you want to name. I'm gonna do the whole lot, why not? Up to that formulas tab and in the defined names group in the middle there, I'm gonna say create name from selection. I want to use the top row as the name for my ranges. Click on OK. And now if I click the drop down in the name box, you can see there are all of my ranges. If I select manager, that is that range of cells. So now I can use these names in my formula instead. So this time we're going to use index and match to return the salary. Our first argument is the array. So instead of selecting salary, I'm going to use my named range. You can do this in a couple of ways. You can start to type it in. And IntelliSense should pick it up, as you can see it has underneath. I can press the tab key and it selects that range. We now need to use our match to automate the finding of that row. Our lookup value is going to be whatever is in J5. Our lookup array is going to be the employee ID. Now again, I can use my named range here. I can start to type it in or I can press the F3 key, which is going to pull up any named ranges that I have in my workbook. So let's select employee ID, click on OK, comma. I want to do an exact match. Let's close off our match, close off our index, and there we get our result. Let's change our employee 
and make sure that everything updates nicely, which I can see that it does. So that is how you can perform a very basic index and match using data validation lists and named ranges. Before we leave this lesson, I want to show you one more example. This time we're going to do a two-way lookup. So let's take a quick look at our data. I have some travel companies listed in here, and then I have their sales for January, February, March of Q1. And what I basically want to do here is I want to be able to select the company from a drop down list and the month from another drop down list and have it return the corresponding sales value. So let's create our data validation drop down list first of all. I'm going to click in cell G6, up to data, and we're going to select data validation. We're going to create a list and the source for our list is going to be the company names and click on OK. So now I have all of those listed in there. Let's do exactly the same thing. We're going to create another list, but this time we're going to do it for the months. So our source is going to be this cell range. Click on OK, and now I can list out those months. Now we're going to construct a two-way index and match formula. So let's type in index, open our bracket. Now remember, our array is where we're going to find our answer. Now our answer is going to be one of the sales values. And depending on what I've selected in these drop downs, the answer could be anywhere in these values. So my array is going to be B5 to D17 because my answer could be anywhere in there. We're going to find the row number using match, open our bracket, lookup value. Well, our first lookup value is going to be whatever we have in cell G6. I want it to look up the company. I want it to look it up in this array just here, so where we have all the companies listed. And I want it to do an exact match of that company name. Let's close up our bracket, add another comma because we need to do another match. We need to match the months as well, right? So we're going to do the same thing. Our lookup value for this match is going to be whatever we have in cell H5. Our lookup array, well, we're looking for that month in this little range just here, B4 to D4. And we want to do an exact match of that month name. Let's close off our match, close off our index, hit enter, and there we have our result. So now I can change both of these. So let's say, let's select March and let's choose a different company and it's going to produce the correct result. So that is basically some examples of how you can use index and match to perform lookups. I'm going to be doing more videos on index and match because there are so many ways that you can use these functions together. But for now, that is it. If you like this video, don't forget to give that like button a good old smash. Maybe consider subscribing. And if you want to be the first to know when I post a new video, then make sure you hit that notification bell. That's it for now. I'll see you later, guys. Bye.